right, this is the most light I've ever put in the experimental setup. I've got it dimmed down right now because it's like blinding, but this is 1200 watts of LED in my standard five by five that I measure and compare all fixtures in. Just for perspective, um, you know, the standard fluence fixture puts out, the 2P puts out about 1500 micromoles, the Gavita puts out around 1700 micromoles. This is 3,044 micromoles, and it will hit um, 1,200 micromoles still three feet away from the fixture. If you're going for as much light as you want or think you can put in one space that you can still pull a yield off of, this is one way to do it. It's hard to do it. Even with a Gavita, it's maxed out at 1,700. So I've seen guys putting you know, 900 watts. Chill LED has a 1,000 watt fixture. If you want to shoot the moon, this is one way to do it. I just did it for experiment. I would never recommend anybody do this much light in a 5x5. Five five. It's too hard to control all the other factors that would allow you to get that kind of yield that you could get in a commercial facility. If you put this many photons in a room in a commercial facility, you would definitely see the benefit if you had control of your environmental factors. Um, CO2, definitely strong nutrient program. Everything's just got to be super tight to be able to run those kind of light levels. But... Um, pretty cool. I always wanted to set this up and it shows a linear correlation between data that I've taken before. So if you want to try to pull eight pounds or six to eight pounds out of a five by five, um, theoretically you could do it this way, but I don't think it's very possible. In a commercial facility, you could potentially pull four or five, six or more pounds out of a four by four square foot if you had all of your other factors dialed. Like I said, not feasible in my opinion, but theoretically possible. So there it is. All right, when it comes to growing cannabis or any plant really, um, we gotta figure out the point of no return with light levels. There's some new research coming out from uh, Bug Bee that says seedlings and clones can handle up to 3000 micromoles of canopy. Um, sunshine in the middle of the summer is uh, upwards of 3,000 micromoles on a meter. Um, indoor gardens, though, we kind of tune towards 1,000 micromoles at canopy level. And a micromole is just a unit of measurement for PPF. If you want to get all those terms defined, I highly recommend the LED Pro Book version 3. It's my buddy Sloper put out. I put a lot of work into this. Um, and even he says for different light levels at different growth stages. For mothers, you know, around 500. And he says in his first table, up to 1,500 micromoles in full flower, 12 to 1,500. But then he also has over here, let's be honest, and has a chart that shows the reality of what most growers are succeeding with. And um, that maxes out at about 900 PPFD at canopy level. So this is, Yield versus light level at canopy. And this is where it gets confusing because we, everybody kind of spitballs this thousand micromoles at canopy. Most growers are really lucky to hit around 800 and see the most benefit from the input around that light level. If you go up to a thousand, you will get an improved amount of yield this much. So Above a thousand, you start getting into theoretical space. So you've got to have, and it's also in this book, he talks about the limiting reagent. You're going to have one limiting factor that's going to keep you back from actually getting that potential yield. So the thought of, you know, going up to 1500 micromoles of canopy, you could continue to see this yield go up. And there are a lot of fixtures now with LED that are coming out that put out more and more and more and more light. And the experimental setup that I just demonstrated put out, in my mind, an excessive amount of light unless you had all your environmentals and other inputs completely 100% dialed. So I'm going to take this down. And this is not to answer the question, but hopefully to explain some of the, the inputs that go into it. And I'm going to turn the screws a little bit and talk about the total amount of energy going into the system versus the total yield rather than this magical PPFD at canopy measurement.
So to really understand how much light is too much, you got to think about rather than the light level at canopy is only a measurement. Every fixture, either LED or HID, comes with a total amount of light that it can put out. That's why the Gravita 1700E puts out 1700 micromoles and that's photon, photosynthetically active photon flux. This is just a unit of measurement for the total rate of output. So this 1700E might put out 3000, you might measure 3000 micromoles directly under the fixture and you might have to be, you know, this is not accurate, but two and a half feet away to hit that thousand micromole per, per uh, canopy level reading with your light meter. But the reality is, you know, the Fluence 2P, either Viper or Spider, puts out around 1500 micromoles. Their spec sheets say 1550. I've got some data that says it's just under 1500. They've got a little fudge room plus or minus in there. The FOS fixtures are claiming upwards of 4,000 micromoles. Um, at, and this is total output putting energy into your growth system. The demonstration I just did was 1,200 watts was 3,000 micromoles. So really, the total potential yield based on the amount of light that you're putting in is based on this number of how much light you're putting into the system and that's going to correlate into how much yield you could potentially get. So like the FOS fixture, you have to hang them way up high and use their optics to drive and move the light down and around wide enough to actually put this 4,000 plus micromoles to where it needs to be. So you have fixtures that are way spaced out. With the Gavita 1700 or the Fluent style or any linear bar fixture, it's just got this broad footprint, and this is called the inverse square law, and it's based on measurement of light from the point source, and really to correlate total yield, you need to check out um, some Bruce Bugsby, Bugby uh, papers and explanations of total energy in versus total yield out. I want to say it's like half a gram per micromole or something like that. So this is all to be taken into consideration. So when you're buying a grow light fixture, you want to know the total rate of output, not what they're claiming to say 12 or 1500 micromoles of canopy is going to give you this amount of yield. It's really the total amount of energy that the plant can use, the total amount of PAR, photosynthetically active radiation, that the plant can turn into carbohydrates and then turn into plant biomass. So this number is gonna be more indicative of your total potential yield than this number where you're measuring the light level, not the total rate of output. So again, I know I just mentioned it, but a lot of this is explained in the LED Grow book. Um, I helped edit part of it and it's the best reference out there to date. There's going to be another one in a couple of years. He keeps putting this out and updating it. And it talks about a lot of this. So on the last section, I'm going to talk about the limiting factor. I think that needs to be explained because right now with LEDs, we've got the ability to put down an unimaginable, unimaginable amount of light compared to any other things that we've ever used before. So we can put down hypothetical amounts of light like I just did with the 1200 watts. We could put 1500, I could put 1800 watts of LED in a five by five space. That's too much, but I'm gonna explain why that's too much here in just a second. All right, you're gonna have to bear with my awesome artistic abilities to explain this concept called either the limiting reagent which uh, Sloper talks about in this book. I learned it as the law of the minimum. Um, it's called Liebig's law of the minimum when we get into horticulture and physiology. We learned it back in the day as a nutrient. We got calcium, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, iron, magnesium. It could be any nutrient. These are some really important ones. So 
this is a, a whiskey barrel. And if any one of these slats, say potassium only comes up to here, and nitrogen only comes up to here, and potassium only comes up to here. Well, then your barrel is only going to hold as much whiskey as this limiting input allows. So the same applies to light. I've got light, CO2, nutrients, water, biology. There's all these different inputs that go into your garden that if any one of these is limiting, it's going to limit the whole system. So if you have, let's do this here. You got all the light in the world. You got 3,000 micromoles at canopy level. If your CO2 only comes up to here, this is how much you're going to be able to yield. This would be total potential yield. And say then CO2 is not an issue. You got 2,000 parts per million CO2. You don't have enough water. And then your nutrition falls off because these two things are churning so hard. This becomes your new yield. So you can look at it as the potential for how much light is too much. Um, theoretically, with sunlight in the summertime, 3,000 micromoles, plants process it and they tolerate it all day. When we deliver light through synthetic means, that's, you know, technically we could put down 3,000 micromoles at canopy level. And theoretically, we could manage all of these different inputs. And theoretically, we could hit, you know, twice the yields that we've seen before under traditional lighting sources. So this is as far as I'm going to take this conversation because there is actually technically a saturation point for the plant where the photosynthetic reactions get overwhelmed even if all the other um, requirements are met there is a theoret there is a maximum amount of input that a plant can actually process and turn into biomass and it gets into some really crazy high level plant physiology uh, non photochemical quenching the plant actually starts taking in that extra light and then processing it out immediately as heat. So there's some experiments and it's actually used, that saturation level is used to measure other things in science. That gets above the conversation here. The point is, if you've got a fixture that puts out 1700 micromoles, you're gonna be able to turn that into X amount of grams of yield. If you've got a setup that's got 3000 micromoles, 4000 micromoles, that's going to be what turns into yield. You've got to worry about uniformity and outside of that um, the answer to too much light I think the sweet spot is around 850 micromoles of canopy and if you're co2 enriched and you got all your cylinders firing that's the target 1,000 and if you are limited by plant count or square footage and you've absolutely got to throttle your system 12 to 1500 at canopy you start getting really expensive on all your inputs at that point so you know thousands of target this is realistic this is overkill uh, and that's what my understanding of it is so hope this helps if you have any questions pick up this book from Sloper it's on Amazon and or hit me up with any questions um all right thanks for watching all right thanks for checking out these videos if you want to learn more about horticulture or just plants in general uh slap like and subscribe and uh if you need help finding lights for your project you can find out how to get a hold of me in the description below all right thanks for watching